welcome back to Heroes of the Dorm. I'm here with two of our celebrity bracket brawlers, Matt Sohinky and Jesse Cox. So what do you guys think of the finals? Both of you have picked UC Berkeley to win it all. Jesse? Uh, I think I think I like the underdog story here. I want I want to come back. Yeah. Oh yeah. Sorry, Berkeley. I, I had you, but I got to change my mind. Changing his mind. So Hinky, what do you think? I got to stick with Berkeley. I think their late game decision making is just too good. The games are amazing. It's really fun to watch, and I just can't wait to see what happens in the next games. Yeah, absolutely. Now I heard you guys had a point to make. So Jesse, so Hinky. The, the Murlocs are very underrepresented right now. Lord Merkington III, otherwise known as Murky, is feeling very underrepresented. We need to see a Murky pick, I think. Where's Murky? Hashtag, Hashtag where's Murky? Where's Murky? <laughs> All right, well, where's Murky? We, we, don't, we haven't seen him yet. Maybe, maybe someone will pick him. Maybe your underdogs will pick him. All right. Well, let's get back to more games. Guys, back to you at the desk. Thanks so much, Michelle. What a crazy day we have had here so far. These games have been so close. That last game was uh, really wild. I loved the all-in dive right onto um, the core there to finish it out because it, had they not done that perfectly, we would have a completely different game and we would be looking at, uh, at that as a pretty foolish blunder. It seems like they always make the right decision about when to dive in as a team. Their team fighting ability is just on another level. I mean, I, I, I can't overstress that. A 4v5, that's all you need to know. And it's not just any 4v5, an incidental one they may have picked up on the map on accident. This was a need to hold 4v5 defense. So it's not just a difficult task. It's a difficult task with the loss right in front of you, in front of a crowd, playing for tuition for your college career. Every possible pressure was on UC Berkeley, and they didn't fold. Yeah, it was Remember, a high moment. Sure. Re remember here, the loser does pick the next map, and that map is going to be Sky Temple. Now, we're not going to go show you that map uh, as, in as much detail. We can talk about it a little bit uh, as it starts up. It, it's fairly basic. You control shrines in the center of the map. Those shrines shoot lasers, as long as you're in control of them, at the opposing uh, player's sides of the map. And while you're holding that, there are neutral monsters that come out and try to engage them. Um, and we'll be going to that soon. And uh, shortly here, we'll be going to the draft as well. But Sky Temple, does anybody uh, have a favorite here on this map? I'm picking most likely UC Berkeley. They could potentially <laughs> win this game. But when it comes to long, drawn-out team fights where you have to secure your takedowns or, of course, hold down an objective, they seem to be just an incy bit better. But at the same time, Arizona State University does have to win this game if they want to move to game number five. So it's pretty crazy. Well, I find out we actually do have a little bit more time. The draft, uh, them getting that ready is taking a little bit longer than we thought. So uh, day nine, why don't you go ahead and take us into an in-depth look at Sky Temple. Absolutely. Sky Temple, as always, managing three separate tug of wars and gathering up objectives to help you get the pushing power you need to get all the way to the core for the win. As we take a look at Sky Temple in depth, it's all about controlling the center line of the map. On Sky Temple, we have three lanes, similar to Cursed Hollow, quite a large distance between them, but the temples are the core spread across the middle of the map. The five mercenary camps are always a few steps away from the center line temples, making them a tempting proposition. But teams will have to ensure that they devote resources to holding and defending the sky temples in the middle. As Nick said earlier, they shoot lasers, pure and simple, knocking down the fortifications. As a result, team fights happen all the time in a tight, focused, clear space. If UC Berkeley continues their clean team fighting record, they're the clear favorite to take the win on Sky Temple. Sky Temple is a, it's a great map to have here as this fourth map. Such a highly contested map, oftentimes a long game. I tell <laughs> yeah. you guys, I am really hoping for that comeback as well. I want to see that game five, but right now, UC Berkeley really looking to close this out and, well, pay for college. Yeah, this is a battleground that we've seen a lot of rotations happening on the other maps, but this is a battleground where you're going to have teams hold an area for an elongated amount of time. It comes down to really perfectly coordinated teamwork and, of course, always watching for a gank or a roam to come your way. This map can be pretty insane if you're not on top of your game. 
You know, yeah. I think one of the biggest things to see consistently on Sky Temple, you must stay in one location for a very long amount of time. Heroes of the Storm is all about mobility, movement, the path you take around the map, except on Sky Temple. So often we will see players try to set up a double threat. Take a mercenary camp right before the temple is open. Always be on the lookout for two simultaneous threats on Sky Temple. It is, it is a tricky map. It's also one of the newer maps that were released. And in Heroes of the Storm, there's going to be constant new maps uh, put out there, different battlegrounds. And that is what makes the game very exciting, is that uh, each battleground has different objectives. So that requires different play styles, different heroes when you pick them. But uh, this is, I believe, the second newest map in Heroes of the Storm. So we've had a lot of... Um, we haven't had as much time, unlike, for instance, Haunted Mines, sure. which we saw, like, a ton of that um, when the game was just now coming out. This is one of the newer maps. It's going to be interesting to see how these guys play it. They are university students. Professional gaming is real, but these guys are, pay are playing to, uh, for their college tuition right now. Yeah. So the question is also, how much time have they had to prepare on a map like this? Well, uh, let's not forget that ASU chose this map. They lost the last map. Oh, so yeah, yeah. just like UC Berkeley won the map that they chose, I think we can see that again from ASU. I'm sure that they put a lot of practice in this map. They obviously feel very comfortable because they are choosing this when their tournament life is on the line. Yeah, you're right, Oxo. It's just when it comes to battlegrounds, remember Curse Tallow, they're very good at controlling objectives and always trying to stay away from T-fights unless they get picks. And Sky Temple is one of those battlegrounds that will allow you to get pickoffs as people are walking towards you. So maybe a Diablo Toronto pick could be here for Arizona State, but it looks like the draft has finally started. Arizona State not playing around. They're going to take away Illidan from Fan. And as a counter pick over here for UC Berkeley, grabbing Sylvanas and Jaina right off the bat. I love that Jaina pick, Day 9. Oh, of course, with Sky Temple, everyone's going to be loitering at the temples. Jaina does amazing burst damage in an area perfect for assaulting the temples. <laughs> you know, Brightwing, as we've said so many times today, if it's a good pick against Illidan, why not pick them for ourselves? Denying that choice to their enemy, and of course, going for the all-round solid. Follow. And AKA Face has been playing a fantastic Brightwing. He's always been in the right position. He's used a blink heal there, that heroic, to really allow himself to get out of the way. And of course, frame perfect timing when it comes to Polymorphs. He's always there to help out his teammates. So why not pick up the hero that he's played so much already? It's now going to go back over to UC Berkeley. The next pick is ETC. Not a shocker there. ETC, a very strong hero. You can dive into your opponents with that stage dive ability and actually get oh. a very good initiation. And the fourth hero pick, what, what, that it was, was that? Tychus. Oh, Tychus. Oh, wow. I actually didn't uh, see it for a second. Guys, That's a big surprise. We haven't seen Tychus uh, here today with these two teams. So I'm wondering, are we going to see him use that laser drill to help control some area? It, it, it is a completely topsy-turvy thought process going on to Sky Temple. As I said before, the entire game of Heroes of the Storm is all about mobility. Except on this map, where the most important thing is immobile, sitting by the temple. So all of a sudden, these heroic abilities that sit in one place become powerhouses. I think that was a really brilliant statement, Day9. It is, this is the one map that is not so much about mobility. It is really about securing a position, holding it, and defending. Tychus is very good at that, but we see over here from ASU, their last two picks going to be Diablo and Tassadar. Boy, going into this game, the composition is starting to be figured out for Arizona State University, but I want to talk a little bit more about Tigus. That laser drill is so good at holding down an area if they do go for that. And of course, it's great against Illidan. Beautiful counter pick there from Ultimated. And the last hero, hero pick for UC Berkeley will be Suppy on Uther. Uther, um, we've seen Uther before. Uther's a great hero to pick because he is quite versatile. You can engage or you can heal. There's a lot of options there. But it is now time to begin game number four. So let's make some noise as we go into Arizona State against UC Berkeley. On the far left, currently up in the series. If they win this game, the they take the entire tournament. It's going to be UC Berkeley. And the blue in the very far right on the red team. It's going to be Arizona State University, and they've got to win this game, Artosis. That's right. They have to take this down right now, right here, or they are out. And they have to pay for their college careers themselves. <laughs> 
<laughs> and we see now the teams uh, splitting out on this map. Again, important to emphasize, uh, physically, this map is, is quite big. There's a, a lot of areas you can go to. It's not going to be like if you just now joined us here at ESPN2. It's not going to be like, like that last map. That last map, very small, very tight. This one, a lot of places to hide, a lot of places to run to, a lot of places to escape to or engage from. Now, there are three different temples on this map that you can hold, but they appear somewhat randomly. It's like, okay, now two temples are up, one temple is up a little bit later on, and that really focuses where you're going to see the fights. Yeah, the later drones in the mid to late game are the ones that spawn randomly. The first couple are actually a little bit easier to figure out, as it will have one here in the middle and one at the very top. The second one will also be in the bottom, but after that, yeah, there is a random factor that has to be figured out, and our teams have to be flexible and willing to rotate. Right now we do see three in each top lane. This makes a lot of sense because those are the first two uh, temples that do open up. So they want to be ready to really make a powerful move and grab as many laser shots as possible. Okay, so we see it already a little bit of tension up here at the top. A 2v3 right now, and the temples are about to activate. Now, normally, uh, the first time on this map when the temples activate, because everybody is so low level and weak, we see each side take a temple, but there have been uh, occasionally exceptions to that. Yeah, socially acceptable to allow one team each to grab a shrine, and they sit in the other lanes and grab the experience. And that seems to be the story here, as AKA Face is grabbing this shrine for himself in the top, in the middle lane. Actually, wow, we see some aggression coming from Berkeley. They don't want to be socially acceptable here. They're going for <laughs> some aggression. Yeah, it looks like they're going to chase back Melkor and Fam for a moment here. Will they actually move up to the north, though, and try to take out Brightwing? Looks they, like they're going after Fam at the moment. They're actually going for an odd strategy. They're going for the turrets, trying to take them down to get the experience. While in the middle lane, we had Illidan actually grab the shrine, and Tychus finally took that over. Oh, got to be careful there, Melkor. But here comes Mike Udall. There is four members here. It is an interesting play that they're actually pushing here, which is not what we normally see on this map. Um, and letting each uh, kind of uh, splitting up lo uh, control over these other locations. So that's that. I I'm a bit intrigued yeah. by that. But you know what? This is uh, a new game compared to a lot of the other esports games we've seen. And when you have new games like this, you oftentimes do see new strategies, especially when it's some of the best teams in the world competing on the big stage. It, it is without a new doubt new strategy. I'm very surprised we haven't seen all the lasers shot from both of them by yet. But it looks like oh my, Sylvanas being taken down there. You see Berkeley losing a hero. Fan getting a nice takedown there, or being taken down as we had Mike Udall going pretty aggressive. Just, it looks like AKA Face is going to be helping out with this uh, top lane as well, but we need to see someone in the middle lane. There we go. We have Mike finally doing so. Um, but I do want to talk about that strategy we saw uh, from UC Berkeley. They actually grabbed the top two turrets in the top right corner, and effectively what the Shrines do, they take out the turrets as well. So honestly, it's a little bit on the even side. Interesting, different strategy, but there is still a Shrine in the middle that needs to be picked up. Yeah. This, uh, this temple here, once he picked up and finally Melkor does move over here, will we see Berkeley come down? No, they're keeping up the pressure on the top lane. That's, that's really surprising. I did not expect such a strategy here from UC Berkeley, but we do see the experience is growing a little bit in the favor of ASU because of this. Uh, it's a bit interesting, you know, ASU going for a bit more of the conventional route, uh, UC Berkeley a bit creative, uh, not surprised to see that, but now we're going to see what is a much more common engagement on this map, a fight over the Shrine right now as they begin to use their hero, or hero abilities, excuse me. Yeah, it looks like Melkor does end up going down here. You see Berkeley winning a battle over on this temple. By the way, guys, get out there. Hashtag Storm the Dorm. Let us know what you're thinking now that we have the heroes of the dorm here in the finals on ESPN2. You see Berkeley keeping up with this pressure, taking away turrets as much as possible. Here's a third and fourth turret taken down in the game from them just by utilizing Sylvanas uh, as on um, fan here as well as Panagio just going for the pure aggression and we need uh, Arizona State University to find some way to kind of stop this the best way to do it is to mel get Melkor in an engagement and take out Panda however the play has been phenomenal with Uther and Suffy really keeping her alive in team fights and now we're at the point in time where they're going to be capturing mercenary camps when they capture those mercenary camps they're then able to push into other lanes those mercenaries work for them although they don't control them they're AI controlled artificial intelligence controlled they will push those lanes causing further problems and more difficulties there for the defending team in this case it's going to be ASU well those seed giants are going to come down here into this bottom lane we do have zero to help them out we'll see if he can push through maybe kill off a couple towers destroy the gate open that area up and gain some experience for his team 
Well, do remember that the Shrine will be spawning in the very bottom of the battleground pretty soon. So you see everyone setting up for that. They're grabbing those bruisers here on the far left. That will push that top lane. They're going to be grabbing potentially the bruisers in the top right. Arizona State in the very bottom right of the battleground is grabbing their siege giants as well. So everyone's trying to open up the map a little bit here to get ready for everyone to move down to that area and try and grab that Shrine and also move towards level 10. They're practically tied right now in experience. You see level nine is about to be achieved here. There it is now for ASC, which means they're both going to get to level 10. They're both going to have what? the boss oh. at the same time. Whoa, 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 whoa. Unexpected play. Yeah. This is risky. They're going to go for the boss over here, capturing this. This is a super mercenary. Taking him out is going to have a very strong push now in the bottom lane. It's very surprising. It looks like Ultimated does see this happening, but he's alone. He can't really do too much against this right now. And it looks like somehow, someway, ASU taking out the earliest boss I've ever seen. That is the earliest boss I've ever seen, and it looks like Ultimated might be picked up as well. Miracle of Georgia Sport, and there is a oh, quick oh, pickup oh, for oh. Arizona State University. Now, on the other side of the battleground, why that was allowed to happen, in the very top, we did have aggression coming from Panda, Suppy, and Fan. They got the fort, but this golem in the bottom left corner, this boss, will be able to push through and get this fort as well, especially with these shrine spawning. Yeah, let's not forget this temple is up right now. Kotank in there, claiming that temple, making sure the lasers are shooting for their side and we're in a push with the boss dealing a ton of damage to this fort. Yeah, and there was still pressure in the top lane, and a majority of the members for Arizona State University finally went back to defend that, so they're going to clear all that stuff up. But overall, in terms of trade, I'm going to give Arizona State University the lead here, unless we can see an engagement down on the uh, temple in the very bottom, but everyone's currently in the middle, so it looks like Arizona State University gets the map objectives, got a fort as well, and has a little bit of pressure. We do see UC a little bit ahead of experience, but still crazy play from both teams right now. Yeah, I'm loving this. Uh, some fantastic plays from both sides right now. We see a lot of uh, concentration down here at the bottom with a counter push from UC Berkeley, starting to destroy the infrastructure for the first wall off that uh, Arizona State's had set up there. But Arizona State, with solid defense of their own, drives them back. It's now going to be up to UC Berkeley to find another part of the map another way. Well, you see Berkeley rotating upwards right now, going towards that center lane as we see, but right behind them is ASU. Melkor actually way over on the side, ultimated hiding in that bush. We could see an engagement coming up here. We do have uh, Kotank moving up. He realizes that there might be a team fight pretty soon. And also something to note, Kotank picked Archon instead of Force Wall, which is completely different from him. It might be a bit of a, a mind game change here, but, and it's actually pretty strong, especially on top of the uh, shrines, but or on top of the uh, temples, but it is very different for Kotank. Is he actually ready to use that heroic? It's, I, it's been a, a bit of a lull here. The, the action slowed down a little bit right now. They're both at level 12. You can see uh, cleaning up respective parts of the map. It does also seem as though UC Berkeley's uh, very interested in setting up traps. So we see them also oftentimes running into bushes together in the hopes that a stray hero uh, from ASU will come by and they can jump out and go for the kill. Well, right there, they did try to go for Kotank, but he backed up in time. His team coming up to help quite quickly as well. Meanwhile, down south, we do see Zero here with these Seed Giants. Michael Udall and Fam gonna move down and help clear this out, but all of UC Berkeley is actually right there to help out Zero. This is the area where they'll want to get into a fight if they would like. Maybe above here in the top left where three members are here for Arizona State University. They're going to grab their Giants and potentially push back here as well. And you see UC Berkeley doing a lot of movement. They're trying to get their opponents into a situation where one or two of them maybe doesn't rotate correctly and they can pick them off. But now, with the Shrine spawning, we're going to have some aggression from our two teams. Important to note here, the two Shrines that are about to activate, one high up in the north, the other way down in the south. So this could be a situation where the the two shrines are just, I guess it's a, um, like a tacit agreement here. One, uh, one team might go to the north, the other go to the south. Or we could see some crazy place here where they try to split it up. AKA face one to see down <laughs> and grab this temple. As soon as he sees, sees four members, he says, nope, pulls on back and is going to go ahead and just soak that experience. But you're right, Arizona State University has grabbed the top, top one and they're using three members to push down this court. Well, we do have ETC there trying to hold them off. In the meantime, Brightwing trying to slow down the push, the advancement down at the bottom of this map as well. We do see ASU removing this bruiser camp. They're going to get that to fight for them as well. A really strong push. Looks like it's coming for them. You know, it's funny. It looks like a nasty push here from both players. And uh, instead of actually continuing to push down there at the bottom lane uh, for UC Berkeley, they're going to come up here and destroy the middle uh, set of defense up there for um, uh, ASU. And now, I guess, continue. 
continue to push forward towards that core from the bottom right side of the map. What's so interesting is UC Berkeley has been a team that's been all about team fighting, but they're pulling out a strategy to throw off Arizona State University to just push with Sylvanas to keep up the aggression, and it's working out, but overall, we're even. The keep in trouble in the top left corner here for UC Berkeley. It will get picked off. It looks like, okay, come on, someone hit it. Gonna take it out in the very <laughs> bottom, bottom right corner. We do have this keep being taken out as well. But this is maybe the breaking point. Arizona State University is backing and they're trying to get into an engagement. They are slightly up on experience right now, pushing back UC Berkeley. UC Berkeley going to retreat. Only one mercenary camp actually up on the map at the moment. It looks like ASU will go after it. It, it is interesting to see that there's a thin layer of defense structurally here for um, ASU remaining. UC Berkeley does have a chink in their armor at the top part of the map in the upper left-hand side, but that's not necessarily a game decider. That's just something that you want to keep your eyes peeled for as a possible way for this game to spiral out of control. All right, now we do see ASU moving up through the map just after UC Berkeley takes that uh, tower and does see them moving up there. So they do have some idea of where they're at, but looks like the boss is up again as well. Some siege camps down at the bottom, so we could see some battles down there. That is the potential that could happen as we're going to see uh, Arizona State University steal the giants of their opponents and they're actually posturing in these bushes because the opposing team can see this boss is up already and they saw them get it earlier so they might come down to check it. This might be a bush party here set up for our team. Now this is smart. They're booby trapping the map. They're hoping that UC Berkeley is going to come down. Now UC Berkeley seems to be privy to this information or maybe Ooh, I talked to soon actually. Uh oh. Fan gets flipped over here and it looks like a jump in from Zero on ETC. Archon mode here for Kote and just carnage absolutely everywhere. Arizona State uses the booby trap and is able to take out two members there. Fan being one and Suffy being the other. Zero ultimated and Panda are forced to retreat and look, the temples are up, Tasteless. The temples have been activated. This is a perfect moment to take out the boss, to take out the temples. Only two structures remaining for UC Berkeley's base. After that, temples will only deal damage to the core. If the core is damaged, if the core is destroyed, the game will be a loss for UC Berkeley. Well, right now we do see ASU almost at level 17. They've gotten that boss. Those temples are up, and it looks like the teams are just going to split them at the moment. But the advantage is currently in Arizona State's right, uni University's favor because they have the boss that is grabbed, actually pushing down in the very far bottom left. So with that added damage, it will eventually get to that four. You're going to have the uh, temple damage here as well. They just have a little bit more than their opponents. And remember, they saved their keep earlier on the other side of the battleground, which allows them to take a little bit more damage than their opponents. So you see, here we go. The boss starting to break down a little bit on this keep. And even if you see defend this, four of them being stuck here has allowed actually for Arizona State University to take the middle temple as well. They have both temples and a boss they have everything going well for them now don't count out UC Berkeley just yet they're gonna have to play a, a fairly perfect game from here if they're gonna win but Arizona State we've seen them bungle some leads before well I don't know if that's gonna happen this time they did choose this map they are showing some fantastic team play here taking the objectives at very interesting times and gaining those advantages but UC Berkeley they are grouped up are they looking for a team fight here you think they might want to, but the thing is, is they picked the entire time their strategy has been pushing down a different lane. The problem is they can't do it anymore. So I think the only option they do have here is to go for a team fight. You're right, Artosis, because look at the mini map. Let's pull it up really quickly. We have so much pressure coming in the top, the middle, and the bottom lane. You see all the little red dots. Arizona State University is in the lead now. And in fact, let's go ahead and check it out. We might have a fight here as we have members already on Bush once again. All right, Melkor charges in right now, and it looks like he's going to grab Panda. Flips Panda over. They're putting a lot of damage on him. Panda does go down. A beautiful pickoff there by ASU. ASU coming in here now. Only two heroes remaining, and they're being isolated very quickly. Uh, we see Illidan now getting up there in the front, and it looks like the core is going to be exposed. They have to save the core, uh, and I don't know if there's going to be any way for them to do it. It's a five versus two. With only ultimated and fan left, do they have enough damage to stop this? Right now we see the entire ASU roster going ham on this core. The core looks like it will go down 10%, 5%, 2%. And ASU ties it up two to two. 
incredible series for us. That means we're going to a game number five, deciding match for our two teams, but Arizona State University going against an odd strategy that you normally don't see on that battleground, but still keeping the composure to secure a win. Day nine, what'd you think? That was a weird one, absolutely. On the map, we saw it begin with UC Berkeley utilizing a very unusual strategy, going directly for direct pushes in the lane, which, if you think about it, the Sky Temples are a roundabout way to do that, but it's about efficiency. You need one hero to hold a Sky Temple. You need about three to push effectively with Sylvanas. And what this meant is that as UC Berkeley was avoiding Arizona State University, suddenly there was a time where you looked at the map and thought, wow, Arizona State University has four of the five Merc camps all for themselves. And suddenly UC Berkeley that had been avoiding team fights the entire time were down on levels. Even if they wanted to team fight, it would be at a disadvantage. Arizona State University is really showing that on maps with lots of decisions, they are masters of decision making. The crowd here is pumped and I gotta say, we couldn't really be asking for a better finals. When we return, we will have our last game and then we will be crowning the champions the true heroes of the dorm. Stay tuned.